بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد The Prophet said in authentic hadith صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل الذي يذكر الله والذي لا يذكر الله مثل الحي والميت The example is similar to of the one who makes the dhikr of Allah and the one who does not perform a dhikr is like the example of the person who is living and the person who is dead. Allah Azza wa mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu thkuru Allah dhikran kathira wa sabbihuhu bukuratan wa asila. O you who believe, remember Allah. Make the dhikr of Allah and do it a lot. Remember Allah Azza wa and glorify Him during the daytime as well as the nighttime. And another ayat of the Quran is showing the significance and the importance of a dhikr. Allah Ta'ala said about the believing men and the believing women, وَذَاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَذَاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا The men who make a lot of dhikr, as well as the women who are believers and they perform a lot of dhikr, Allah has prepared for them His forgiveness and a tremendous reward. A tremendous reward. From the tremendous rewards of a dhikr, and there are many, is that if a person found himself being able to perform a lot of dhikr, it will give him or her physical strength. It will make that man stronger than what he actually is. Strength, physical strength, bodily prowess. It comes as a result of making a lot of dhikr. If someone wants to make the acquisition of becoming strong and getting quwa in his body, then let him make dhikr and not sleep on the importance of this issue. Why do I say it? I say it for a number of reasons. First of all, in the Quran, in Surah Hud, Hud, who was one of the many prophets and the messengers in Al-Islam, salawatullahi wa salamuhu ala al-anbiya wal mursaleen. In Surah Hud, ayat number 52, 5 2, Allah said that who said to his people, وقال, Who said to his people, O oh my people, make istighfar and ask Allah to forgive you and also make tawbah to Allah. If you were to do that, Allah will cause the rain to come down upon you, blessing you, blessing your animals, blessing your vegetation. Allah will sing you rain from the sky. And in addition to that, he will increase you strength on top of your strength. So the scholars of Islam took from this ayat an understanding. Because who said to his people, if you make istighfar and you make tawbah, Allah Azawajal will give you quwa. He will give you strength and add it on to the strength that you already have. If we look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will find that he was the strongest of the people. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said he was given the strength of 30 people. The Quran would be revealed and Allah said about the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتُهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشَّةِ اللَّهِ had we revealed this Quran on a mountain, you would have witnessed the mountain rent asunder. The mountain would have fell down as a result of the fear of Allah, the weightiness of the Quran. And yet the Quran came on the Prophet and was revealed upon him. And he didn't crumble. It was tough on him. It was difficult on him. He said that the most difficult way in which the Quran was revealed upon him was when Jibril came to him in his natural state as an angel. He has 600 wings on either side. And those wings, they covered the east and the west. And Jibril only came to him two times in that form because it was so difficult and it was so heavy. But the Prophet Wasallam was given the strength and the ability to handle it. Even the mountain couldn't handle the revelation of the Quran coming down. But the Prophet did and that shows his strength. He would be on top of a camel. And when the Quran would be revealed on him, the camel would fall down because of the strength and the weightiness of the Quran. The Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, was an extraordinarily strong individual. 
some of his strength came as a result of Allah Azza wa just giving it to him, preparing him for the mission of taking this message of Al Islam. But some of it came as a result of him doing certain things or not doing certain things. What were some of the things that he did that helped him to become strong and helped him to maintain his strength and his health? He had a good diet. You never read where the Prophet ﷺ was eating ghee and eating grease and eating oil and eating a lot of uh, a lot of sugar and saturated fats. You don't find that in his sunnah, in his diet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Another thing that he used to do is he used to eat moderately. He used to eat, and he told the people, a third of what goes into your stomach should be for the food. The other third should be the liquid that you drink. And the other third, the last third, should be for the air. He didn't fill his stomach up with three-thirds of food. He didn't do that. And then on top of that, he put two-thirds of a liquid inside of his stomach and then one-third of air. No. The Nabi Wasallam did certain things that would cause him to have his strength. From what he did is he avoided ma'asi, the noob and ma'asi. He avoided doing things that were haram. He didn't drink khamr which will compromise an individual's health. He, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, didn't smoke cigarettes, which would compromise his health. He, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, was the furthest person away from what was khabith, what was dirty, filthy, nasty, unhealthy. Those were some of the things that he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to attain and maintain good health. But the thing that we're talking about today that he did that helped him to have good health by Allah's permission was a dhikr, a dhikr. As it relates to a dhikr, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam will wake up in the morning, he will make a dhikr. He will put on his clothes, he will make a dhikr. He will go into the toilet, akramakum Allah, he will make a dhikr. Come out of the toilet, a dhikr. He will leave his house, dhikr. Walk to the masjid, dhikr. Into the masjid, dhikr. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will read the salat, the dhikr of the Qur'an. In the rukur, in the sajda, in the qiyam, dhikr. After the salat, he would sit there and he would make adhkar and so forth and so on. You get the picture. He was an individual that made adhkar. And you will find, unfortunately, that the vast majority of Muslims are not aware of the daily adhkar that we should be doing. So the fact that the Prophet made a lot of dhikr, it helped him to be strong. And this was the case with the salaf after him. So I encourage all of you, I encourage all of you to try to be of those people who make the dhikr of Allah because it goes a long way in ensuring bi idnillah good health. Look what happened with Ali ibn Abi Talib and his wife Fatima. May Allah be pleased with both of them. And what was collected by Imam al Bukhari. Fatima used to do a lot of the household chores. And as a result of that, she was developing calluses on her hands. So the Prophet came to visit them, sallallahu alayhi wa one night and they complained. They say, Ya Rasulullah, would you not give to us a khadim, a servant, someone who can help your daughter Fatima to relieve her from the strenuous jobs that she has to do in the house? The Prophet loved Fatima, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he wouldn't have any qualms with giving her a khadim. But what did he say? He said to her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to Ali, he said, if you say subhanallah before going to bed 33 times, alhamdulillah before going to bed 33 times, Allahu Akbar before going to bed 34 times, he said, that is better for you than having a khadam. That's better for you. Now, it's very important that we make the parallel and the correlation and the connection. Fatima is looking for someone to come to help her physically. To physically help her. In her mind, in the mind of her husband, Ali, that is going to happen in the form of a khadam, a human being who's bringing strength to the table. The Prophet Sallallahu told her, make these adhkar, 33, 33, 34. And then he told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, thalika khayru lakum, that is better for you. She needs something with strength? Send me a khadam. What did he say? No, I'm not going to see you a khadam. What you should do is make the dhikr of Allah. Because the dhikr of Allah, he knew, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will give the person strength. If you have the discipline and the patience and the wherewithal to sit after every prayer, every day of your life, for the majority of the time, if you were to do this, 
This is going to make you physically strong, not to mention mentally strong, psychologically strong, and spiritually strong. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, his student, Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah had the ability to sit and to write a book in one day. He had the ability to write something in one day that would, that would take a scribe one week to write. And it was the job and the profession of the scribe. During that time, the scribe was called the Nasikh. If I wrote a book, Sahil Bukhari, I wrote the book. I would take that book, the pages, the hadith, or all over the place. I'll take it to the Nasikh, the scribe. And it was his job to write out what I gave to him and make it into a book. It's his job, his profession. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Utaymiyyah in one day was able to complete in one day what it would take a scribe to do in one week. When they asked him why, he said it comes from the strength of dhikr. So brothers and sisters, inshallah azawajal, let us be of those people that Allah Ta'ala has prepared for them a lot of forgiveness and he has also prepared for them an ajr and azim, a tremendous reward. And from the rewards is physical prowess and strength. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على النبيين.